Fed interventions, including its rescue of Bear Stearns, appear uh, to have been designed to maximize bad incentives for future reckless lending and borrowing by institutions affected by them. That's not exactly a nice verdict on what the Fed did. But I want to say a little bit more about it. I want to refer, first of all, to the views of Walter Badgett. Badgett, by the way, was the second economist, of, uh, uh, the editor of The Economist magazine. But uh, he's perhaps at least as famous for having authored a book called Lombard Street in 1973, in which he developed what has since come to be known as the classical rule for last resort lending. And that rule was that the central bank, right, he was then referring to the Bank of England, but the rule has since been generalized, Central banks should, during a crisis, lend freely but at high rates of interest to all solvent institutions. The idea of the classical lender of last resort rule was that the, the role of the central bank was to save the sound components of the financial system by making sure they don't suffer uh, collateral damage from the failure of those institutions that have been unsound, that have made unwise investments. So the central bank is supposed to channel liquidity to the sound institutions, not to the unsound ones which are supposed to be allowed to fail. Unfortunately, Badgett's classical rule for last resort lending is honored by central bankers almost always in the breach, and that was certainly true in the recent crisis, as this chart shows. This shows the different components of the Federal Reserve assets. Uh, basically, uh, this, this light gray zone here shows what's happening uh, to the Treasury securities that were, prior to the crisis, overwhelmingly the main security on the Fed's balance sheet. So basically what the Fed does normally is it provides liquidity to the marketplace by buying U.S. government bonds in the open market. That uh, The funds from those bond purchases go into the so-called federal funds market which is a competitive market where banks bid for them for uh, supplementing their reserves and making sure they remain liquid and can settle and all that. Now, here's the period, the early period of the crisis, and you see all this, this dark area, all right? Uh, that's direct lending to certain financial firms. Now, first of all, the firms that were getting all those direct loans we're not, at least the, the overwhelming uh, consensus is, they were not sound. They were the ones that had loaded up on subprime junk, were in bad trouble because of it or because of their dealings with other financial institutions with, that had a lot of such junk. The Fed was rescuing, lending to these bad institutions. That's not budget. That's not classical. But it gets worse. Because notice what it was doing. It was cutting back on its open market purchases in order to offset that lending. In other words, instead of giving liquidity to the sound firms to keep them from suffering collateral damage from the failure of the unsound ones, it is rescuing the unsound firms using funds taken from the general marketplace that is funds that would otherwise have kept the sound firms solvent. That's Badger turned on his head. Badger, by the way, I cannot say it often enough. Badger made his recommendation about last resort lending as a, what economists would now call a second best solution to England's problems. You know what the first best solution was, according to Badger? Don't have a central bank. <laughs> And he's very explicit about it. And the central bankers are always citing Badgett. They say, you need us. You need a lender of last resort. Badgett says so. No, Badgett says, if you're stuck with a central bank and you want it to not do too much damage, here's what, how you want it to behave. That was what he said. It's like, suppose you're stuck with a lion in your house, right? A man-eating, potential man-eating lion. You can't get rid of it. Okay, so you train it to get the paper, right? Does that mean that your neighbor now really needs to get a lion so he can have his paper in the morning? So, so here's what Mr. Sissi said, look, at the end of his book, he says it in a couple of ways. I've tediously insisted that the natural system of banking is that with many banks keeping their own cash reserve, which they're issuing their own currency, right? They're keeping their own cash reserves. 
The Scottish system was no doubt in, in Badger's mind, because it worked back then, with a penalty of failure before them if they neglected, right? You do a bad job, you fail. And yet, I propose to retain uh, this other system.